is uh, Mr. Yu Hong Chang. Uh, Mr. Chen uh, has a master's degree in mechanical engineering from NUS, and he specialized in advanced manufacturing. His current research uh, covers a wide range of topics related to 3D printing, uh, including design optimization and algor algorithms, uh, translational research in construction 3D printing, which aims to apply the, the technology to enhance productivity in construction. Uh, project management and supply chain uh, study in construction 3D printing with respect to both positive printing uh, and negative printing methods. Uh, so Mr. Chen will explain the meaning of uh, these terms. Uh, Mr. Chen? Thank you. Hi, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my speak to, uh, for this, to, for, for this um, presentation today is the development of 3D printed volumetric framework to accelerate the PPVC construction in Singapore. And uh, as uh, the lab tool that I did the presentation yesterday, that I made a clarification on C3DP, which is a construction 3D printing, which should cover both the concrete 3D printing and also the, uh, the printing of materials of other kinds, including the timber, polymer, and clay. And actually, the concept is uh, raised by uh, most of the practices that we and the researches are, are done by the positive printing, like the houses that you're doing. And uh, this includes the concrete and clay that you directly print the house wall and columns, as you seen yesterday. And my, uh, my sharing today is uh, to introduce a new way of doing the construction, which is a negative printing. In terms of negative printing, which is uh, the material that I'm using is a polymer and which produce a framework for the construction. And the drive for this, uh, there, actually there are three major drives to, in this research. The first one is a demand to raise the uh, construction productivity growth in Singapore. And the productive, productive growth is the only way to remain global competitiveness and uh, attractive, uh, retain more local and skilled laborers in the sector. And this is uh, announced by the Minister of Singapore. And actually uh, in 2003, the BCA also we uh, promote the construction industry target to achieve 20 to 30 percent of improvements by 2020. This is uh, uh, the local hope that we we should have right now. The second drive is to explore the new construction technology. Right now, the construction, as you can see, that there are there are way too many to improve, and the efficiency, the productivity is a uh, the the improvement is a great there. And uh, right now, the Singapore government has introduced the PPVC, which is the prefabricated volumetric construction. And this was in, actually in 2000, 2000, and the Singapore government wished to enable small construction work to be done in the controlled factory environment and finally shorten the total construction time, increase the quality of building products, and save the site's labor in Singapore. And since it's been 18 years, and we see there some improvements, but still not satisfactory. So uh, the government also introduced the design for manufacturing and assembly, which is to improve the productivity for further maximizing the off-site production and assembly, leaving the maximum assembly work at site. And this may lead you to think about the prefabrication. And actually, the 3D printed framework will be serving as one of the role in the prefabrication, both on-site and off-site. And with this uh, prefabrication, and this will like uh, have uh, several advantages that we may enjoy. It's uh, less noise and dust generated and the better quality home, uh, better quality home and safer workplace. And the third uh, drive for this technology is uh, immersion 3D printing. And 3D printing technology has been uh, classified as a tier two technology, which means that the moder moderate productivity impacts with a 15 to 20% of improvement in productivity. And it's, um, the research should be undertaken to validate its effectiveness and it's suggested by the BCA that to adopt this technology to develop the low volume volumetric architecture shapes, building components as well as construction modes, formworks and reinforcement. And these are the three major drives that uh, we look into this research into the 3D printed formwork in construction. And the problem that we identify from these three drives is that uh, the basic one is the production cost for the formwork. Actually, the formwork, as you can see from the normal buildings with a rectangular shape or flat walls, then you may see that it's not a big problem, but 
in the case that you see, the, there are a lot of facade that you see uh, in this Singapore, the villas or the airports and see the facade. They are very complex geometries and all of the formworks are one love. And this is to cater with the taste of the architects and this also poses the problems of our engineers. So the problem for us is to reduce the production cost for such applications. With the specific problems in PPVC that the PPVC would require the standardization of mass production to achieve economy of a scale. Standardization does not favor the small scale production. And finally, the limits are design flexibility. And the second uh, problem for us is that uh, it requires a speed worker, uh, experienced workers to support the prefabrication and assembly of a construction element. The 3D printed formwork, and actually as I uh, have uh, made it clear that the formwork is a major role in this uh, concrete printing with the formwork production. And uh, uh, for those who may not familiar with the formwork, it's uh, actually the temporary supporting structure that is uh, installed on site and loaded with a fresh concrete, concrete for curing before it is disassembled. And the cost of uh, formwork production installation and disassembly accounts for half of overall construction cost. So if we can find any way to improve a little bit of this and the great the overall cost will be dropping dramatically. Uh, to do this research, I've categorized it into the five stages. And the first one is um, the, the uh, problem and the product definition. And then we do the proof of concept and also the uh, production design to do a bit of the test and then produce the prototype. And finally, we do the assessment and with testing. And these are the details, uh, detailed methodology that we're undertaking. And in order to, like, to thoroughly understand the formwork production, and we uh, made a very in-depth study into the production of a formwork. Actually, for a typical process of a concrete construction, it includes 11 processes, as indicated in this slide, which start from uh, the application based on requirements. We start from how to choose a formwork, and how to build, fabricate, and then install, disassemble, and put the concrete, and then and finally the, here, the curing and repair. And actually, this is a very tedious process, as you may know, as for those who come from the construction, and you may see that for the formal construction, it actually takes a very long time and can be costly. And uh, for those 11 uh, steps, as uh, indicated in the previous slide, that uh, we have also identified the activities for each of these uh, steps. This is to serve as a, for, uh, this will help us to make a very detailed assessment for each activity so that we know where the problem is and how to improve from each of these parts. Uh, this, um, this is uh, how's it, the uh, diagram that we generated based on our research and uh, well, these are very detailed ones. Maybe you cannot see that in detail, so uh, for the time being, I won't share too much in detail. And actually, this, uh, for those who are from the construction sector, you may be very familiar with uh, each of these ones. Uh, those are the uh, research works that we've done uh, through the, uh, like, well, the, the standard industry and the literature review that we have did. And we also uh, get in touch with the industry partners and also the local organizations. Like the first one is a PERI. It's a, uh, actually the former consultant, and we had a very in-depth discussion with them to understand the situation of a uh, uh, former industry right now. And what they uh, learn from them is the design, the formwork regulations, the design criteria, and product types from there. And because they have been doing the formwork for so many years, and they are quite experienced in this kind of, uh, uh, they are very, very mature way of doing this formwork. Uh, but for them, uh, what we get from them, the problems that they're facing right now is not about the formwork itself. It's actually about the installation and demoding processes. For those uh, trained workers, they may protect the formwork services and then this will be lead to the longer durability. But for those who may not be so trained, they may just throw the formwork away to site and then the like crack and use a hammer or whatever. And this will damage uh, the formwork and then the formwork, the durability and the lifespan of the formwork will shorten or decrease dramatically. And this will also is uh, another factor of incre the increasing formal cost. Uh, the second is uh, Tiong Sen. Uh, he's a local uh, PPVC supplier. And uh, second and third, uh, Simco is also a PPVC supplier. But they uh, achieve the PPVC production in different pers perspective. The first one, the Tiong Sen, is a dry joint assembly. The second one is a wet joint assembly. 
by by doing this, uh, the dry joint is um, like they prefabricate the panels of the houses. Like we have a house of uh, uh, four walls and the roof and the the the, uh, the floor, and they prefabricate it and then use a dry joint, which is use just use a bolt, a very high strength bolt to bolt them. And the, by using the wet one, which is uh, produced by Semkov, they they cast concrete to form a like cast the concrete inside the joints of these two panels so that uh, they can join firmly without any leakaging. Uh, these are the two different methods to produce a PPVC products in Singapore and uh, they are very uh, successful right now. I, as you can, if you're working around Singapore and you will see these units have been installed. Uh, a brief uh, details about the Tensoin is that uh, I, I want. I wish to. I wish I can share some of the pictures, but I don't want to make this a demo of their company. So I just brief you uh, through the speech. So for Tencent, is uh, actually they produce a lot of projects uh, which are very successful, and including those uh, irregular facades. And they have done the project for the airports, for the like residencies, very beautiful ones. And you may check the, through the website of to, to see the things. And uh, what we uh, actually during a discussion with the Tencent, and we. Uh, raise a question: How do they, how they would accept the 3D printing technology to improve in their work of skill? And what they get, uh, what we get is uh, actually they have a very big concern on the reinforcement and the material requirement. Actually, this is a very general query from the crowd that uh, we receive. Uh, Turns out we're doing the 3D printing, but how we do the reinforcement and how we Control the material to make it strong, as uh, as well as we can, uh, as well as principle. Uh, I my co um, sorry, my colleagues uh, yesterday has shared a bit uh, on how we uh, do the reinforcement. It's actually a manual thing. That is one of our solution, but we are trying to gain more solutions in how to get improvement. And I think this is a of a great research. I won't do too much into that. Uh, Okay, this is for tension, and the, set, the, the third one is the same cop is using the wire joint. Wire joint is a, and they're using a lightweight concrete. For them to produce, a, to supply the PPVC to Singapore is that they have a factory in Malaysia, and uh, they do the assembly there, and then they transport all the units to Singapore at the collection point, and then to the site. Uh, this, um, there's a limitation, because they are using trucks and the rope, and the road works to transport those PPVC units to Singapore. So there is a dimension of the limit that it cannot uh, like exceed five meters. So this is another a problem that's for the current situation of a PPVC production in Singapore. And uh, the fourth one is a uh, HDB, and we pay a visit to HDB as well, and to see how our proposals can can be accepted by local authority as well. And actually, we got a very supportive. Uh, opinions and for them, they have a very totally different uh, like aspect apart from this technical part. Because for them to make a residence, uh, residents to accept this uh, uh, technology, they do not want the wall to be too thin. This question is really that we are trying to use a lightweight concrete and strong concrete to reduce the amount of uh, concrete that we're using so that the walls are very thin. But for them, they don't want the wall to be too thin because there will be like uh, decorations now and then by the residences and this can be a problem, the, the residency may have a concern that if they change the tiles of the wall and this may make the, how say, crack the wall as well. So this is out of our expectancy and just to share with you. And uh, there are also other uh, issues like the liability issues because as an authority, they may be more concerned about the maintenances, uh, fire production, multiple decoration, safety and line of responsibility. Right, right now, there is no clear code or standard in Singapore as well to how these 3D printing things can be used in Singapore. So these are all their concerns and also the obstacles that we need to overcome to push this application forward. So uh, these are the products we produce with a 3D printing format. And you can see the first one is a facade. The second is a wall with opening. The third one is a wall with opening and still with air con platform. You cannot see the aircon platform because um, I break it <laughs> suddenly. So uh, with this, you can see that uh, these are all produced with one formwork, actually. So it greatly in increases the productivity, as you may see. And uh, for the in terms of uh, cost, and the, it's, um, if you produce something for the first one, 
it may have to attach like tens or twenties of formal, and this will like have a very large amount of time that you do the installation. But this one is like one of one piece of, and it's just a casting one of. So uh, the second one with opening is also just a one cast, and we produce that. Okay. So uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, and these are the, uh, are the other products that we pr produce, and this one is like the water waves, like uh, water drops. Uh, and the left hand side, left hand side is a uh, cast concrete. The right hand side is a formwork. Actually, it's uh, almost equivalent. So you can see the surfaces finishes are very accurate, as you cannot produce with a normal way. And uh, during our casting and the molding and demolding, we have uh, several kind of problems. Like we're trying to produce the features like the air cones, air cone platform which is um, like the U-shaped formwork and T-shaped formwork. By the time you are doing casting, there is no problem. But then by the time that you are demoting it, and you may have the problems of uh, breaking the platform here. As you can see, the, this one is a breaker one. So we also look into these factors and try to try our way to solve this problem as well. And for your appreciation, this, uh, we can also use a formwork to produce the souvenirs. And this one is a SD50. As you can see, the, we're expecting our 50th uh, anniversary of uh, School of Design Environment next year. So this is what we produce. And it's uh, like 20 cm long and uh, 15 cm wide. And this one is uh, with very fine features, also as one cast. And this one is a souvenir that we presented to GOS yesterday. And this was a multiple cast. And we, I need to thank for all my Team members, we spent uh, quite a long time to produce this. This is producing concrete as well. Okay. So the overall assessment of this is that, uh, and now within our study, we we uh, we based on the local, uh, based on the current market, and we also start uh, like foresee the future trend. For right now, the cost is a bit high because of the equipment cost, and also the market scale is a bit small, and the labor and lead time, uh, all these are attribute to the high cost of, for the uh, production recently. But then, as you can see that, uh, if we reduce the full marks of producing the complex geometries from 20 workers to like two or three workers, and this will reduce the amount of workers dramatically. As in Singapore market, and the uh, labor cost is really high. So this is a major factor that we can reduce the cost from this aspect. And uh, for Rena, and also for the shape, as um, there are limited applications right now, uh, it uh, shows uh, great advantages in the complex uh, geometries and the irregular shape, as we can see from the complex facade. But for a simple shape, we cannot see any difference. Or maybe this one will have a higher cost than the traditional production method. But in future, as we increase our technology and with the better management skills, and then the cost, labor, and lead time will be reduced as well. And the other thing, that, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention the lead time with 3D printing uh, technology. And this one is actually. Uh, the solar uh, how's it, advantage that owned by 3D printing that shorten lead time. In case there is any changes in your mode, with a traditional mode that you may spend another round of time, like three months or one month, to produce a very complicated uh, format. But then for this one, we just need to print it maybe within two or three days, and then we can produce a new set of format. So uh, there's a Indeed, the future for this one is really bright, and we can reduce the cost for this, and then there may be a wide range of application, which will also attribute to the low cost of this uh, uh, 3D printed form. All right. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you very much.